Good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to our Meet Your Residence Manager webinar. For This is for Glassyard Building and for Highline Building. Um, if you would like, you can um, put in where you're joining us from today. So whatever country, city that you're joining us from, um, if you just put it in the uh, chat box and then we can find out where you're all joining from. Okay, we've got some in the chat box. So we've got um, someone calling who's joining from India, um, someone from Hong Kong, someone from South London, so not too far away from the halls. Um, Joburg, South Africa, uh, Delhi in India, someone from Essex, China, Amsterdam, Athens. Um, yes, it's great, great to see you all. And thank you, especially for those who've made the extra effort. I know it's maybe nighttime, morning. So yeah, a real um, thank you for joining us for, um, for this webinar. Um, we've got someone else joining from India as well. So yeah, we'll get started in a moment. So um, what we're gonna do today is a presentation and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So any questions that you have, um, or that come to mind as the presentation goes along. If you put it in the uh, chat box and then myself and Sarah will answer the questions at the end. Um, just to say as well, anything that we don't manage to answer, because quite a lot of questions come in last minute and they all kind of happen at the one time. So any questions that we don't manage to answer during the session, we will be getting back to everyone after with um, with a response in writing um, by email. So don't panic if we don't answer, we will get back to you with a, with a full answer after. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just a bit about who we are. So my name's Sarah, I work in the accommodation services team. And then also joining me today is Sarah Thomas, another Sarah. Um, mm -hmm. So Sarah is the residence manager for both Glassyard Building and Highline Building, um, and she'll be taking you through the presentation slides today. So I'll hand over to Sarah. Hello, everybody, and um, a very warm welcome from us in London. Um, thank you very much for joining us today for the presentation. So um, I'm Sarah Thomas, I'm your residence manager for both the halls, as the other Sarah mentioned just now. So I'm going to take you through um, um, some slides today. So we're going to cover what do you need to know before you arrive, rent information, what to do when you arrive at halls, what does a residence manager do, what should be in your studio or flat, what is in your facilities, halls life, health and safety information, support available at UAL, and then questions and answers at the end. So what do you need to know before you get here? So um, hopefully um, by now many of you will have done your e-induction, so please do um, go online within your accommodation portal um, and complete it. It um, gives us some information um, from you about when you're um, thinking about arriving, adding your arrival date, your time, etc. Um, and if you need to change it, you can either go back and do that or send me an email and I can do it for you, no problems. Um, there's also an online guidebook um, that's through our Halls Life platform that we'll um, give you a link to later. But do have a look through there because it um, gives you a lot of useful information about the hall, the local area, etc. And then if you've got any questions, again, you can then email me, e email me or the accommodation team, the main team. So um, that's the um, main team there, the accommodation at arts.ac.uk for any questions you might have. So rent information. So um, when you um, signed up um, to take a, a place in, in the halls, um, you gave your credit card details and everything. So that would be um, what we would be taking your payments from. So um, the first payment date is the 2nd of um, September. The next one is in January on the 8th. And then the third installment is um, on the 8th of April. If you have um, a student loan, if you um, let us know by logging your um, loan information onto your portal, we can change your payment date to match um, when you get the money in to your account. So um, you also um, have an option to pay in full. 
um, by credit card or debit card when you accept the offer. So some of you may all have already done that. Um, termly payments are um, what most people would do, and those are the dates um, above. And that um, it, it's really important to know that the if you're doing that termly payment, um, the card that you paid your um, acceptance with, so your deposit and advance rent, that's the card that we will be using to take your termly payments. So if you need to change that, um, then please contact the finance person, or I think you can do it um, within your portal as well. Um, some of you um, can also be paying by bank transfer, um, and this is for the international students among you. So um, we have a finance administrator for both halls, um, and this is how to contact him. He's called Amari, um, and it's accommodation finance at arts.ac.uk, or the telephone number is there as well. And they can help you with changing your payment card details, your payment plans, if you've got any queries about your rent, and they are there to help. So if you are struggling to pay by set dates or whatever, please do um, let them know. Um, they will contact you, obviously, if, if there's, um, they're not seeing the rent come in as well. So just make sure that you um, engage back with them at all times. So um, what to do when you arrive in the halls? So we ask when you um, turn up, please, to show some sort of um, um, ID that has a photo on it. So passport, driving license, that sort of thing. Um, we'll ask you to sign one or two bits of paper just so that we know you've arrived and then you will be given your key fob um, which will allow you access um, in and around the building and the areas that um, that you're allowed in so your room your flat the common areas etc your um, friends and family are very welcome to help you move in um, and then you can maybe go off and explore the local area um, there's also um, an offering um, one, just shortly after um, arrivals day actually to meet up with the Halls Life program team and they'll also take you on the tour of the area. Um, for arrivals day we have trolleys um, so you know that will help you um, move stuff from reception up into your rooms just make sure please 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 to bring the trolleys back to reception so somebody else can, can use them. So what do what does your residence manager do so what do I do so um, you can contact me um, using details that you'll find in the guidebook and I'm here to help with um, references, proof of address letters that you might need to open bank accounts, um, queries regarding um, your room or your flat, um, if you're having issues within the flat um, with flatmates or you're not quite sure how to report maintenance, um, so any queries um, to do with your accommodation, rent or tenancy. Um, and I can signpost you to other services within the university, um, such as finance or wellbeing support within student services, um, if you need um, help that I can't provide. So you, anything, basically, come and see me <laughs> or send me an email. So what sh should be in your studio or flat? So we provide um, a mattress protector to help you um, protect the mattress a cutting mat to help protect the desktop. So do use these items because it will prevent um, any um, damage charges um, at the end of your tenancy when you move out if you've damaged anything. Um, take a look at the, the hall guidebook um, that gives a list of the items that you'll find in your room, um, how to use the heating, how to operate the window. The windows are a little bit um, funny at Glass Yard. They're sort of tilt and turn. So um, there's instructions in the guidebook. Um, we'll also, when you arrive, <clears throat> give you a paper in inventory um, that you'll need to um, complete and give back to us um, within 48 hours of your arrival. So that's your way of telling us if there is anything missing, if there's anything damaged, or you think something may, um, well, we prefer you to do repairs through the maintenance portal, but um, we're happy to have that on the inventory as well if you're not sure. Um, but please do fill that in because that protects your deposit. So you're telling us if there's a mark on the wall or a mark on the carpet um, or there's a scratch um, on the desktop, do do please put it on that inventory and give it back to us. 
Um, I would also recommend um, taking some pictures. We don't need the, the photographs ourselves, but if you um, take pictures, if there is um, a charge that's added to your account at the end of tenancy and you say, well, actually that mark was there when I arrived, you can send the picture to me and we'll take a look. So um, charges, well, a lot of the, <laughs> is what I've just said, um, is telling us um, when you arrive, if there is anything wrong or missing because um, sometimes throughout this, your stay it is necessary um, for us maybe to um, fix something and if we believe it's um, maybe student damage either um, in the communal kitchen so it would be shared or it's something within your room then obviously there may be a charge attached to that. Um, those always go on to your accommodation account, you're, you're more than welcome to um, query them back with us um, and then um, that you either pay them or um, should they be left at the end of your stay with us and they come out of your deposit. Um, so um, I mentioned earlier sort of repairs and maintenance. Um, Fresh who um, operate the building for us, they have a system called Yardi. Um, you'll be given instructions on how to um, uh, load the Yardi app onto your phone so that you can then report um, repairs and maintenance um, that you notice either in your room, um, shared uh, communal kitchens um, or around the hall. And um, it's really important to do that. You're not going to be charged for repairing or maintaining anything or, and, unless it is damaged. So um, just to give you an example, a hoover that sucked up water will be damaged. So that would be chargeable to replace. Um, but replacing um, a light bulb that stopped working, then there is no charge for that. So please do report stuff. Um, and um, unfortunately, their Yardi system doesn't allow you um, to choose a room number. It will just give the flat option. So within the description you're giving us as to what needs to be repaired, if you could also add your, your room letter um, as well, that would be very helpful. Um, kitchens inspections, we um, inspect the kitchens once a month so we always leave a form on the day that we do the first inspection to let you know what, what improvements you need to make and we also say whether you've passed or failed that first inspection. If you failed it we give you two days to put it right, we come back. Um, if it's um, still not up to a standard we would want to see um, then it is failed and um, Fresh will bring in their cleaning contractors and then obviously there's going to be a charge for that and that is split between everybody in the flat. Um, quite often it's sort of kitchens that um, shared flats maybe struggle with so um, I can help with um, putting in um, cleaning rotors and, and things like that so um, do come and see me if that is, um, is a, an issue in your flat. Um, you can obviously um, use um, any company really but um, Unikit Out is, is one there um, where you could maybe um, pre-buy bedding, kitchen items etc that, that will turn up at the hall before you do so if you are coming from overseas or you don't want to carry all of that stuff with you um, then there are companies like Unikit that you can, can purchase from. Um, I see a lot of Amazon and a lot of Ikea as well so feel free to to have a look around of where you want to buy your stuff. So um, what is in your, what is included in your facility? So um, obviously we have um, refuse and recycling store, so you need to bring down all of your refuse and recycling and put it in the appropriate bin. Um, they're located on the ground floor of each building and are well labelled. We also have laundry facilities um, in both halls. It's um, circuit uh, laundry that operate the, the machines and it works on um, either a, a card that you can top up online or um, an app so you can pay directly on your phone. We also have um, common rooms and work zones where you can come and socialise or work in groups, they're also on the ground floor. Um, you have security so the buildings are managed 24-7 um, so there's always a member of staff you can call on even if they're not in, um, at reception so you're never alone in the hall if you need help. Um, you obviously have um, your key fob and that um, as I mentioned before will let you in and out of the relevant areas. Um, we um, operate um, 
post and you know we'll take your post and other deliveries for you um, the post boxes are in reception of both halls so for anything that will fit in the box that is where to look and the key for that box is on the notice board in your kitchen um, but anything larger than that we keep at reception and then there's a google um, post list that you can scan on your phone oh, my light's gone off so that probably means I'm sitting in the dark <laughs> excuse me so um, and um, on that google list you just put in your room number and that will show you if you've got any parcels to collect and then obviously yes we've got the the reception desk um, where you'll find members of staff most of the time but as I say if they're up and around helping other people then uh, and it's an emergency by all means um, give them a call and they'll come down and assist you so all's life i think sarah you're going to have a yep <laughs> for to give my voice a rest <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so all's life is our events program um, and well-being support run by students like yourselves who are also going to be living in halls this year so i would say in terms of um finding out what's going on with halls life um and for the latest updates it's definitely worth following the instagram page so it's just at ual halls life all one word um so on there they have different events that they're running um and things that might be happening in your hall so that's kind of the first go-to um point if you want to find out what's going on with halls life Look out for the dog one. The dogs are yeah, coming in. Dog therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and is that at both your? I believe so. Yes, believe okay. so. So yeah, we have puppies, and you can cuddle with the puppies and things like that in your hall. So it was really popular last year. So yeah, they'll be running that again um, this autumn. Um, so yes, as I said, they're students who. Um, form part of Hall's Life and they're called a Hall's Committee. So you'll have a, a committee who live amongst you within your halls and they'll arrange weekly events. Um, you can definitely um, give your opinions and um, what you would like to see the committee organise. So make sure that you, um, you find them. They'll be running events in the first few days um, after move-in and throughout the month. So if there's anything that you'd like to see your committee arrange, then yeah, they're the best people to speak to. There'll also be external events. So things that you can get out and about in London, um, so kind of boat party uh, and theatre trips as well. So if you want to, if it's your first time visiting London, that's a great way to kind of get out there and, and see see different things within the city. Um, as well as the Instagram page, there's also the um, website where you can find out events and actually book onto them. So that's on the uh, the page at the moment. All this information is also within the guidebook, so don't feel that you have to write everything down. Um, we will be sharing this within the guidebook. Um, so yeah, so that's the kind of the, the events part, but um, the Hall's Life programme also provide the wellbeing support for students. Um, so that's called Here For You. Um, so this is kind of more tailored that if you're struggling or just kind of need to reach out to other students and speak to someone, you can do by attending um, the, the different wellbeing events that are held. So um, there's the Here For You uh, chat, coffee and chat, um, and themed wellbeing events each month. Um, also kind of in the well-being element there is also a free dried food products that are um, provided to students you'll find the boxes of uh, food within your common room so if you just come down with a tupperware plastic box you can you can take back some of the the food and and cook that in your flat or studio um, there's also taboo tuesdays where it's kind of topics that may be um your you know kind of coming across for the first time when you're um, coming to uni. So maybe things around consent and relationships. Um, so this is a way of kind of opening up and kind of understanding a bit more about those subjects. Um, yeah, there'll also be wellbeing boxes that will be available um, with kind of, uh, I think there's things like um, coloring books and maybe kind of mindful um, activities that you can do to, to kind of help you out if you're feeling a bit low. Um, there's also access to STI testing pre 
pregnancy tests and free condoms throughout each of the halls as well. So um, yeah, if there's ever something that you need, Here For You are, are there to help you. Um, and you can also contact Here For You at the email provided or scan the QR code on the poster shown on the right. That poster will also be um, throughout your halls as well. So again, um, yeah, look out for that if you feel that you do need extra support during your time at halls. So um, a bit on um, health and safety um, within the hall. So um, as part of your um, e-induction that I hope you've all done, please do, <laughs> um, there's um, a fire video um, and lots of fire information there for you. Um, we do do a weekly fire alarm test. Um, that's on a Tuesday between 11 and 12. You'll hear the alarm sound for a very brief um, moment or two. Um, if obviously during that time they go on for longer, then um, you will need to evacuate um, as you would um, if you do hear the fire alarms go off um, at any other time. Um, so do pay um, attention to the fire um, information on the back of your flat door when you arrive and make sure you know how to get out of the building should you need to do so. Um, sometimes the route that you've taken in might not be the route that you need to take out, so just make sure you, you know where the stairs are um, and other fire exits. We will be doing um, a fire drill each term, so once we've got most of you in, we'll probably um, run one of those sort of um, towards the um, tail end of September, beginning of October, just so that everybody um, is aware of what they need to do. Um, so uh, where to go? Um, it will tell you on the um, instruction notice on your flat door um, at Highline. Um, you, you, it's, it's, if you're standing at the main entrance door and you've got your back to the main entrance door, so you're coming out of the building, it's on your right hand side underneath the railway arch and at Glass Yard again it's right out of the main front door and um, along the road and we meet outside cost cutters the little supermarket up the road so um, but that information is um, contained within each flat in your guidebook etc or just come and ask so um, I've already been in touch with some of you um, if I if you've disclosed sort of um, physical um, medical conditions um, and uh, you know we're, we're talking already about um, a personal emergency evacuation plan that's the peak there that you can see um, if at any time or, or now that you think that maybe you might need um, a plan put in place to assist you out of the building um, in case of an emergency please do get in touch with me um, sometimes it might be something that we have in place for the entire duration of your stay um, at other times it might be um, just that you've I don't know um, broken a foot or something so um, you know it might be in place just for um, a short period of time but we, we just need to know if, if you might need help evacuating so um, working in halls um, a lot of you do a lot of um, art and crafts etc that might be um, a little bit um, uh, a fire hazard so if you're not sure do come and speak to us um, there are some things within your tenancy that we don't allow um, so we don't um, allow spray painting anything with a naked flame um, sort of blow torches um, incense sticks that you're burning um, Please don't use them within the halls. Um, smoking, etc., is not allowed inside. Um, we've obviously got the cutting mat in the room so, to prevent you also from damaging the desktop. Um, and we ask, you know, when you are working, um, there shouldn't be any noise, um, disruptive noise heard outside of your room. Personal safety. Um, so we'd always recommend using um, licensed cabs, so the black taxis, Uber, um, City Mapper is a good app to have um, downloaded onto your phone um, to help you navigate around London. Um, keep your valuables hidden, um, especially when you're coming out um, of the tube um, or out of buildings. Um, don't automatically sort of bring out cameras and um, mobile phones, etc. As I've mentioned before, um, the buildings are staffed 
um, hours a day. So if you do encounter any problems, do come and um, speak to us about them. Um, we'd always recommend um, reporting things to the police as well. Um, so, and do save the um, site mobile number onto your phone um, once you've arrived, um, because you know if, if you do ever need help from us, um, either when you're inside the building or just coming home, um, then it's um, you've got that phone number to hand. And that is in the online guidebook. So um, other support at UAL. So obviously you've got um, people like me, residence managers, um, other staff within um, accommodation services. Um, I can always signpost you on, or as can other members of the accommodation team to, to the right service within UAL. Um, and then we have student services. So um, they have their basic student advisors, counselors, health advisors, chaplains, disability advisors, dyslexia coordinators, and specialist tutors. Um, so um, if you're struggling with anything, um, then I expect somewhere along the line, we have somebody that can help you with that. So, um, and you can contact Student Services Direct by visiting their webpage, um, which is there at the bottom. Um, and it will, it will, again, give you a list of um, options for the advisor that you might um, need to see. They've got um, money advisors as well, um, if anybody is struggling to fill in their student finance loan, etc. So there is, uh, we're going to go on to questions in a minute, but there's our basic sort of um, web pages and telephone numbers and everything, and including our um, Hong Kong number there for um, our person in Hong Kong. So I think, is that it, Sarah? Are we going on to yeah. questions? Yeah. Yeah, that's everything. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. So no just to say, um, also in the in the chat box, I've also put in the link to the guidebooks. Um, you would have got this in an email last week, but just um, any email addresses, any website links or any phone numbers that we've mentioned in the presentation, you can also find them in there and also more detail um, of the things that we've covered today. OK, so questions. Someone's asked a question about been Sarah, just in terms of both the bedroom and the uh, kitchen, would you be able to confirm the bin situation? Bin. <laughs> what, okay. what yeah. um, so in in the bedroom, you've got your basic uh, basic waste paper basket. So um, it's up to you what you put in there. Um, and then in the kitchen, you'll find two bins. We've got one green one for recycling which is mixed recycling um, in the hall. So paper, cardboard, glass, plastic, uh, foil, tins, that sort of thing. Um, and then your general household waste. So um, food, uh, really messy containers that you don't want to wash out, that sort of thing. So, yeah. And then once you, once you bring that down to the refuse store, then you'll notice that there are different bins contained within it. Um, one will be for the mixed recycling and one will be for the general waste. Great. Um, and would you be able to confirm, someone's asked, are there any cleaning products provided um, in the halls? Um, not um, in terms of chemicals and, and stuff. So you'd need to bring whatever you feel comfortable using for cleaning. Um, we do obviously provide mop and bucket, iron and ironing board, vacuum cleaner. Uh, dustpan and brush so there's equipment provided to help you clean but not actually the products that you need to put, put with them I suppose. Yeah I think quite a lot of students as well maybe the ones who are in shared flats they kind of work together to work out maybe a, a, a system for buying things yes, together um, as well yeah. so it's not kind of left to one person so those kind of conversations are good to have early mm. on in, in a whatsapp chat so um, so that everyone knows what what they're doing and working together. Yes, um, it's always a good idea to have a sort of flat WhatsApp group to discuss that sort of thing, <laughs> and not have ten washing up bottles all stacked up along the windowsill. <laughs> exactly. Um, someone's asked about the size of the beds. Would you be able to confirm? Okay. Yes. So um, in in the UK they're they're called a small double bed, so they're four foot wide, so they're 
between a single and a double. So when you're looking for sheets, it's four foot sheets that you need to, to look mm -hmm. out for. Um, ah, this question comes up quite a lot. Is there a time that students need to return home by? Um, or, you know, is there a, to, will people be locked out um, if they're too early, too late, when they arrive back at halls? Maybe, the, they, maybe we should start that, Sarah. No, <laughs> no once, you've, um, once you've picked up your key fob, um, once you've arrived, then you are free to come and go as often or as late or as early as you wish. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I suppose if you're going out um, at night and you know you're going to be late back or early back, if you're coming back in the wee, wee small hours, um, I would suggest um, either you're traveling with somebody back into the hall or you've let maybe a flatmate know um, when you're on your way back. So at least somebody knows that um, you've not gone missing at all. Or if you do go missing, somebody realizes you have. So yeah, just keep yourself safe. And there is a, a section in the guidebook um, about doing just that actually with some with some um, ideas um, that you might like to use. Mm -hmm. um, and then also bringing extra stuff to all. So this is one that comes up quite often as well. So <laughs> someone's asked about, can they bring things like a mini fridge or a kettle or maybe extra furniture for you know creating more storage spaces in their in their room um i would try not to bring in large bulky stuff um anything that you do bring in would have to be fire rated for our building so it's it's better not to sort of bring in um upholstered chairs etc um I do see a lot of clothes rails, extra clothes rails um, in rooms. Um, by all means, you know, that that would be fine. Just make sure you can move around within your room so that you can get out if you need to. And, and if you're requesting any maintenance, obviously we, you know, the chap doing it needs to be able to move within your room as well without um, causing himself any damage. Um, so, I mean, if, if you're ever unsure, um, sort of come and speak to me first before buying an, uh, an extra item. Um, and um, there was something, uh, yes, it's I suppose, just, yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to cook in your rooms, um, that, that will set off the fire alarms. So um, if you're wanting your own kettle or toaster or rice cooker, then you would need to, to, to use that within the kitchen. Um, you can't use it in your bedroom. That's great. Um, someone's asked how many flatmates they're going to be living with. Um, um, flats, yeah, flats vary sort of between seven, eight, nine. Um, the biggest flat we've got at, is, is at Highline, it's a 10 bed flat, but we've only got one of those. Some of the smaller flats at Glass Yard are four or five, six maybe. Um, but generally, yes, yeah, it's, it's seven, eight, or nine students, other people that you'll be sharing with. Mm -hmm. um, oh, someone said, how many people are we allowed to help um, help us move in? I have three other people hoping to come with me. Is that going to be OK? Yes, that is going to be fine. No problem at all. So we're, we're expecting um, quite, a, quite a number of people to come with helpers <laughs> to uh, yeah. help them um, move bags, etc. around. So, yeah, three, three is is fine. Sometimes. Um, yeah, we have complete fam families of people, so there might be six people or so. That's 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 okay. Um, if anybody's, um, we would we would sort of recommend nobody stays with you overnight on the first few nights, just so that you can get to know your um, flatmates by yourself. Um, but if there's um, going to be a problem, somebody might need to stay over, then um, let let us know. Um, keep your flatmates informed about who you've got um, around as well, just so that. Um, um, people are aware if they see somebody they're not used to it within the flat, they know who that person belongs to, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what about parking for dropping off on move-in day? Is there anywhere you would recommend? Yeah, so um, move-in day um, is obviously quite busy. Um, a number of you will be driving or arriving in taxis. So we do have a drop-off zone in front of or down the side of the hall which will be um, 
manned by uh, a member of staff so that you can sort of literally drop off so you, you you're allowed sort of 10 15 minutes to unload onto the trolleys then the person driving that car then needs to go off and find parking um yeah. it can be quite difficult um especially around the elephant and castle um there will be some side streets actually around both halls that um you'll be able to park in on weekends but just make sure you've read the sign on the side of the road so that you don't come away with a hefty fine um, and maybe have a look at car parks um, by googling those or on our uh, I think on our website we've got some parking options for you to take a look at but they will be paid parking yeah we'll be sending out the information on parking um it's later this week, I think it's the 25th, that email will be going out. So um, whoever the student's account, for the, the accommodation account, wherever that email is, that's who will receive the information. So just, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, oh, another one that often comes up, Sarah. Can we mm -hmm. put posters up on the wall or will it damage the paint? It is highly likely that it will damage the paintwork, especially if you're using blue or white tack, even commando strips may leave a mark. Um, if you do put stuff up on the walls, um, then you are likely to receive a £60 per wall charge when you move out if there are any marks on the walls. So I would advise using um, the notice board only, um, maybe the wardrobe if you're careful. Um, but yeah, um, by all means do it, but yeah, be prepared for the hefty fine when you move out. Mm -hmm. um, someone's asking about um, bringing a bicycle, so um, mm -hmm. would it be yeah. convenient if they were going to buy their own bike, is there somewhere where they can um, store it safely um, within the halls? Yes, so um, both halls have a covered internal bike store. Um, you might need to just ask for um, extra fob access to be put on your key fob when you arrive. Um, if you check whether your fob works on that particular door, ask where it is as well, because they're a little bit tucked out the way. Um, if you are going to be, bring a bike, it will need to be stored in the bike, bike shed, not in your bedroom. Um, and always, um, even within the bike shed itself, lock it up with a, you know, with a, a good bicycle lock and make sure you've got insurance on it. So um, every residence in the halls have, are covered by Ensley Insurance, but there are certain items like bikes that are not covered under that insurance policy unless you've added them and paid a little bit extra. Um, likewise, while I'm on the subject of insurance, have a look at that certificate, which is um, on our Walls Life platform somewhere. Um, we, I can send you a copy if, if you're interested in seeing it. Um, just make sure that your items also, if you've got expensive cameras or laptops, that the amount on that insurance covers it should something happen to it. Um, or, or you can always take out some additional insurance either with Ensley or um, maybe your household policy or a separate policy if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, we've only got time for a few more questions, so I'm going to kind of pick out the ones that seem to be coming up the most. Um, so there's quite a few people, Sarah, that have asked when will um, they find out who is sharing a flat with them for those who are in a shared flat? When you arrive and move in. <laughs> I'm afraid we can't give out sort of room numbers before that because sometimes um, allocations do change either through cancellations or um, a friendship group um, comes about or there's a, a medical requirement so I never give out room numbers prior to arrival so you'll find out who you're living with once you arrive and check in. Mm -hmm. It's all, all the more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um... Definitely. Sorry, some, just coming back to the a point on the ironing board, um, mm -hmm. someone just wanted to confirm that there was also an iron provided with it. And yes, yes. iron yeah. and ironing board, yeah, in, in your kitchen somewhere, as long as nobody else has sort of um, moved it into their room to do their ironing, there is one in every shared kitchen 
and uh, you've got your if you are in one of the studios yes you've got your own within the studio as well yeah um, and pots and pans um, do people need to bring those with them when they arrive do indeed yes so the, the kitchens are only fitted out with the um, the white goods so any um, pots and pans cooking utensils plates cutlery etc you need to bring um, some flats um, uh, you know have shared items but you need you need to sort of um, have a chat with your flatmates before you start sort of um, using other people's pots pans etc to see if that's okay so mm -hmm. the kitchens are have got fridge freezers toasters kettles microwaves ovens grills vacuum cleaners i think i mentioned some of the other smaller bits earlier so yeah, they, yeah. If, you, if you're unsure about a, a, maybe a, a cooking item um, you can always email me and ask um, we don't provide rice cookers so if you want a rice cooker you need to, to to bring your own and make sure it is has the special ce british plug fitted on it so that it is safe and that that would go for any um piece of equipment that you're bringing yeah i'll just add to that as well because air fryers that seems to be something that's coming oh, yeah. up in the as well mm -hmm. something in more recent times that's coming up we actually actually have a whole article on hall's life about mm -hmm. um air fryers and that's in the guidebook as well so if you just go onto the guidebook search for the word or two words air fryer um then you'll find out the information that you are allowed to bring but it's just that c marked element you need to consider mm -hmm. okay i'll do one more question sarah mm -hmm. just to say as well okay. for anyone if we haven't answered your question by the end of this week we will get back to you with an answer so don't think that we um we won't get back to you we absolutely will but it's just um, great time. questions <laughs> yeah really good um yeah so last question sarah people want to know a bit more about whether they can have friends family come to stay with them and what the rules are around having okay. overnight guests yeah. This is this is always a tricky one. The, the, the guest, <laughs> so the overnight guest, you're allowed one overnight guest for three nights mm -hmm. in a 14 night period. So over two weeks, you can have one guest for three nights, either separately, three separate nights or concurrent nights. Um, you do need to sign in any guest, whether they're staying overnight or just visiting. Now, if they're just visiting and they're, they're leaving you, um, they're not staying overnight, you're allowed two. Um, they need to be signed in at reception and it's it's not that we're keeping an eye on who's who's having a guest and what they're called etc um, that is purely um, a legal requirement we just need to know approximate numbers um, of guests at any one time so if there is an emergency evacuation that's one of the books that we take out with us so that we can tick people off if we need to um, and um, another good thing is to make sure your flatmates are aware if you've got um, somebody staying with you or just coming to visit again just if they bump into a stranger in the flat hallway or the kitchen at least they know who that person as I say belongs to so they're, 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 they're not frightened that they've got an intruder in the flat yeah okay yeah thank you very much everyone for joining today um, really great to to have you all here and for all the the really good questions as well um, yeah we'll also be you'll get the link to this webinar as a recording um, in the next few days as well so if you want to watch it back if there's something that you missed if you missed the beginning or the end um, then yeah definitely you can you can review it um, if there's any questions that you think of after the webinar, the best place to go to is to email the accommodation at arts.ac.uk and either the central team will be able to answer or they'll forward it on to Sarah or myself and we'll we'll get back to you with an answer. Um, or alternatively, you can call as well. So the, the numbers on there, you can you can give them a call and um, to get an answer straight away. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for attending and we'll see you yes. all soon. Thank you very much, everybody. Yes, we're looking forward to um, welcoming you into either Glass Yard or Highline very soon. Thank you. Thank you.